Hello, I'm John from What Mountain Bike Magazine. And I'm Tom. Uh, we're talking today about uh, two very fast cross-country racing bikes, namely the Cannondale FSI Carbon Team and also the White 29C Team. On the face fit, they're both actually pretty similar bikes. Sort of short travel, 100mm up front on each of them. Very lightweight, 23? 23 pounds. Yeah, so very light. Both have carbon rims, both have funny forks. The Candel uses the, uh, the single-sided lefty, uh, the white uses uh, RockShox upside down RS1, and they're also quite staggeringly expensive, uh, at 5,500 quid for the Candel and 4,500 quid for the white. Geometry-wise, there are certain elements that are pretty similar. They've both got uh, very short chain stays, which is very important in getting to a 29 to handle nicely. They both use the same format, of very cheap uh, chain stays, which helps with transmitting power and then sort of very thin little spindly seat stays which again like with Candale sort of absorb a bit of the bump. Um, that's probably where it ends because the, uh, the white is much longer in the top tube and definitely a fair amount slacker. It's also running a, uh, a pretty short stem by relative means for a cross country bike. I think it's about 80mm. The Candale is very all out cross country, I think it's around the 100mm mark. Both the bikes sport the sort of a very much de rigueur one by drivetrain. In both cases that SRAM's XX1. On the Candale that comes with Candale's own SI cranks. Um, which are alloy, um, moderately stiff. Uh, we've had a bit of an issue with creaking on our bike. They are um, super light though. Yeah, they are very light. I believe lighter than XTR. Yeah. Um, and then on the white, um, they've got, uh, it's just a full XX1 group from top to toe. And it also runs uh, the guide brakes, which use four piston calipers, which might seem like a bit of an odd thing on a, uh, on a racing bike. Uh, but they definitely add an awful lot of confidence mm. compared to the, uh, the XX units on yeah. Cannondale, uh, which are nowhere near as sharp. But that's probably about where the similarities end. Cannondale have always sort of stuck to their guns with um, their design features. You know, obviously the left has been around for quite a long time. So FSI stands for Flash System Integration, I believe. They create the bike as a whole, so it's not just a frame. It's a frame and a forks and a wheel package which comes together. The main sort of interesting story, I guess, with the, with the bike is what they've done at the back end. Traditionally, sort of 29 er wheels have got a bigger radius and therefore a little bit more flexy, got longer spokes. Um, so what they've done is shifted the drive chain um, and the dropout six millimeters to the right. Um, which means that they've then been able to re-dish the, the, the rim on the hub. So normally uh, a, the drive side spokes are a lot more vertical than the non-drive side, so you end up with effectively uh, an off-centre triangle like that with the rim at the top. What Cannondale have done is because they've moved the drive chain out to the right by 6mm, they've moved the flange for the spokes out 6mm, and so they've brought the whole wheel back into alignment. So you've got a much more triangulated spoke system with the rim and therefore theoretically a much stiffer wheel at the back. So stiffer wheel for just the same weight as, uh, as a normal wheel. Exactly that, yeah. And the only issue being that say if you, uh, if you did buy a new wheel mm -hmm. you'd have to have it dished. You'd have to have it re-dished, yeah. So that, I mean that, that's one of the sort of the, the, the issues that they've tackled with the FSI. Uh, the other one is that with the fork uh, which is obviously their own sort of the carbon lefty, um, it's come with a much greater offset fork. So the axle is 55mm um, in front of the centre line of the fork, as opposed to the usual, say, 47 or 40 or 52mm on Trek's G2 geometry. Uh, and this affects the rake and the trail and, and how the bike feels at the front. Um, I've only really ridden it much on a German marathon course, which, to be fair, was, uh, wasn't flat as such, but it wasn't single track, let's put it that way. There's was, there was a lot of fire road. Um, but I know you've been riding it a bit more on some more technical trails. I've been taking on the Sweet Gnar in uh, Bristol's Woods okay. uh, around Ashton Court. So uh, probably oh. fairly representative of uh, sort of pretty standard race courses. Sort of. It's so fairly UK, twisty. Yeah. yeah, twisty tight. Um, not mega amounts of climbing, but uh, a lot of very fast flat out sections. Interestingly, I rode the, uh, the white 29C team first. And that actually, uh, for a flat out race bike, it's not that intimidating to get on and ride. It's got a relatively slack head angle. Uh, it's got very short chain stays. Yeah. BB's nice and low as well. So actually, it has much of the feels like a trail 29er, and that's something that White have developed over the years, that they don't go for super steep, racy angles. They actually keep a bit more casual feel about it. And that's also reflected in the choice of tyres. So even though they're, uh, the Icon's very lightly treaded, they're sort of fairly big volume. And I think that combined with a few other spec choices, there's actually quite Although it's a very fast bike, there's a much softer edge to the white. Mm. Um, some of that in part is due to the, uh, the own brand white carbon fibre rims. There's a bit of flex back and forth in there. And also in the, the upside down RS1 fork. Um, again, it's very stiff fore and aft, but laterally there is a bit more flex. What that relates to on the trail is that, uh, again, it doesn't dart round corners with much verve. 
but it is very stable and when the tyres start to give you do get a good amount of drift, yeah. it's not snappy at all. So a lot of that flex, although people always say well, flex is always a bad thing, it's not always true. Some kinds of flex are very bad, yeah. um, some actually can, again it's not precise around corners, uh, but it actually does sort of mute the ride a little bit mm. and it makes it much less nervous. I certainly found with the white it's much more of a it's not such a brutal ride. I mean, the Cannondale is designed to go fast and flat out all the time, whereas the white is designed to go fast, but it's not quite as sort of pin sharp and quite as, as brutal and edgy as, say, the FSI is. Yeah, I think that came from my, after I'd ridden the Cannondale, and if I had to ride a very long marathon race, I'd much rather be on the white because I'd rather have something that didn't try and bite my head off mm -hmm. if I was a bit tired or out of breath or puking up a lung yeah. or something like that. Um, yeah, on the flip side, the uh, the Cannondale is just scalpel sharp. Um, it's like absolutely launched itself down the trail. Um, those uh, Envy wheels, very, very stiff. Uh, the lefty is very, very stiff too. Um, while we're on the lefty, um, the lefty doesn't have anywhere near the damping performance of the RS1. No. It's a pretty harsh fork, which a lot of racers will like. We definitely noticed it sort of, you start to get hand fatigue if you're riding over sort of bumpy surfaces. Mm -hmm. It's not a plush fork. And even that, I mean, that's compared to even an RS1, which as we know, does have quite an aggressive damper as well. Very aggressive damper, but it looks, it looks like it's mild compared, yeah. to, uh, compared to the lefty. Elsewhere, again, they use their own uh, system integration stem, which means that you're a bit more limited as to if you want to change the, the stock stem fitted, um, you're gonna have to buy an entire new steerer assembly, uh, not cheap. Uh, but again, if you are buying the bike, I'm sure that your uh, local bike shop would, would love to do that for you. So while the Cannondale is a, uh, a little bit harsh and uh, a little bit tiring on sort of small trail chatter, if you hit something bigger, there's a couple of features that actually make it quite comfortable. Um, you might think sort of the, the back end of a hardtail doesn't really move, but it, when you hit something hard, it does actually move quite a bit. That's actually aided by the, uh, the flattened seat stays on the Cannondale and also their save post, which I believe is taken from their road bikes. So the save two seat post is, uh, is about 50 grams lighter than the previous incarnation um, and has 20% more flex in there. So there is a little bit of twang in there, which helps just sort of butter your bum a little bit. So to sum up, these bikes uh, are both extremely good at what they do. If you want to go very fast uh, round and round in circles or in fact, very fast anywhere, then you can't really go much far wrong. It really comes down to whether you prefer sort of a very classic cross-country feel of something that's super sharp handling, super pointy, super fast, or whether you prefer something that's a little more, well, dare I say, modern in the geometry terms. A bit more and, forgiving. Yeah, and definitely more forgiving, and uh, will definitely try to encourage you to go faster on the downhills as well as just the uphills. Um, so they are, they're pretty similar bike, but if you'd like to see uh, the full report, then buy What Mountain Bike, issue 172. Uh, which will be out soon, and read our full report there. You've been watching Bike Radar. We're adding new videos all the time, so don't forget to click subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see more of in the comments below.